And to help me sort things out in addition is Peter Joseph, founder of the Zeitgeist Movement. Um, Peter, I know that you have put a major critique of the mainstream media and its coverage of the Occupy Wall Street movement. Lay this out for me. What's your biggest beef with what we've been seeing in the Occupy Wall Street movement and how it's been covered? Oh, wow. That's a... Well, needless to say, uh, the mainstream media is doing what it always does best, and that's maintaining the status quo. It's not uh, a far-fetched understanding to see that the values that are perpetuated by this system that are associated with wealth generation and the corporations, hence, that run this country, obviously they're going to do the best they can to make sure the public is not aware of the growing crisis that this economic system is creating across the board. So I want to commend RT once again for what I've just seen, for example. It's really wonderful, the service that you're providing. So the mainstream media, I've, I've dismissed it long ago. Well, we, we appreciate it. We have been out covering this uh, since the first day before a lot of people even heard of this. But, you know, I will say, I, you know, I keep my eyes on, on what's on the cable networks. And they have started to uh, be out there a little more in terms of covering and, and showing that this is actually going on, first of all. And, and, you know, I do also have to say that I've seen more and more stories about, for example, the gap between rich and poor, income inequality. Um, are, you've given up on the mainstream media, but do you think that... It, after some time that having this discussion um, will change things, will lead to a, a better country? Or a better world. Um, I do think the pressures that are emerging are not going to stop. What's been generated with Occupy Wall Street, or excuse me, what underscores that generation, that angst, that anger, that, uh, that that insurrection, if you will, isn't going to stop because of the mechanisms of this system, which I'm happy to talk about as we continue. And the mainstream media will be forced to recognize some attributes of it, but it's always going to be colored in a particular way because that's basically what they do. That's what they have to do. That's where their talking points come from. But I don't dismiss the mainstream media. I say that in rhetoric. Obviously, I'm paying attention to, or I wouldn't make the commentary that I do. But I think the public needs to begin to understand that having the concentration of corporate power, ownership of these major mainstream institutions is always going to produce biased media. And it's a natural consequence. It's not that people are unethical that run the mainstream. It's just the value that's associated and hence what they promote. Just like RT and other great, more independent avenues have values that are much more open, they're much broader, more, more informed, and therefore you represent actually what many people want to see, what the voice of the people may actually be as opposed to the filtering that goes through the mainstream. I know so the, the entire Occupy movement began as a blackout, of course, and then the outrageous criticisms, calling them communists and socialists and a bunch of you know, drug addicts or people without jobs or no incentive. You know, all that stuff went through that phase. Now we have hit a phase where the mainstream is going to do some kind of attention, pay some type of attention. But again, I want to alert everybody that it's going to be colored. So everyone needs to go to outlets that are not mainstream. They need to start to frequent blogs, they need to frequent all of the independent media, media that has arisen from common people that are reporting. Or maybe Unfortunately, we live in a world with everyone having cameras now, so it's very easy to go to video blogs and actually see and digest information yourself. Or even so go to some of these places, the some of these parks where people are. Um, you know, there, it seems like more and more they're happening all around the country. Um, Peter, I want to talk real quick yes. about your movement, the Zeitgeist Movement. Um, it encourages also a change in the system. So when it comes to some of the things that these protesters on Occupy Wall Street are frustrated with, uh, you know, a government with officials that are very much chosen by the amount of money they can raise, banks being bailed out, veterans returning home and not being able to find a job, I guess I want to get your take, pick your brain a little bit. What are your solutions to some of these problems? Well, just to correct the language really quickly, it's not my solutions, it's solutions that have come about through a very simple technical analysis of what defines society and what creates good public health, good mental health, what we have learned about social management when it comes to our scientific benchmark. Just to point out before I answer that question, our entire social system is based on an archaic view, a traditional notion that was established long, long ago. It's really kind of an extension of feudalism is what the political system is today. The economic system is a socially Darwinistic notion that there isn't enough to go around, so therefore we have all these mechanisms built in for scarcity, and we now have one billion people starving on this planet, three billion people living on less than two dollars a day. So you look at the consequences of this system, and then you step back and you think about what a true economic system might be, and then a train of thought will be established. True ec economic system is not a, a system based on exchange and money and labor for income. That's a contrivance that we've concocted through a tra traditional 
unfoldings as we've learned through time what our place in the world actually is, what we are, etc. A true economy, which is what's now emerging in the public mind, is the management of the earth. A true economy is management of this household that we have. And proper management is a technical orientation. Maybe the needs of the human population is a technical orientation. So just as we build an airplane with a very specific design, you can't have too much, too much deviation on that or you might injure the efficiency or the efficacy of that airplane, we have to construct society technically. Now I can go on a long tangent about what a technical approach to social management may be, but let me just say this. If we do not actually begin to manage the Earth's resources, if we do not actually begin to take care of society as it is, we are going to see numerous forms of destabilization occur, systemically breaking down the social order, causing much more chaos than we're beginning to see now. But Peter, so you're speaking in very, really you're speaking in broad terms, a, a total restructuring of society. Um, sounds like great ideas, but, but what about realistically in terms of some of these very specific problems plaguing society right now? Obviously everyone, especially down there in this movement, believes that an entire restructuring needs to happen, but do you think that there's some things that can happen now? Yes, I do think that there are things that can happen now, but the things that will happen now will only be patches until the larger order restructuring occurs. Again, the, most of the people in the protest community, Occupy Wall Street, or even the, uh, the mainstream activist community, never stop to think about the structure of this system, the structure and the psychology and values that come from that structure and what's reinforced. And that's where the Zeitgeist Movement really comes into play. Now, I can list all sorts of things that could alleviate different tensions as far as the debt crisis. First of all, you're going to have to have outright debt forgiveness across the board if you expect to stop the cancer of debt growth. It's, that's it. The entire system is based on debt being created, money being created out of debt, interest charged upon it. So therefore you have, boom, your black hole instant, exponentially increasing, unstoppable debt growth. Period. That's it. So it's structural to the system. How many people are talking about that? Not that many. Well, I you think a lot of people... Crisis. What is... I think a lot of these protesters are talking about that the system needs to change. Uh, most people just still very unsure uh, of how that happens. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. Peter Joseph, founder of the Zeitgeist Movement.